All right, hey guys, <laughs> we're here. Something's a little different this time. Keith? Hey, what's up, bud? It's like, like an episode of the Twilight Zone or something. What's going on? Happy to be here. Welcome um, to Clearwater. Yeah, I like it here. What is it? The uh, the the country's largest indoor boat showroom. I, I come here and it's almost like I'm I'm walking in the halls of great greatness. It's like when I come to this store, it's like I'm walking in Keene at the NFL Hall of Fame. It's actually uh, Kyle Langman years ago came in here and gave everybody New York Yankees hats and we're like, oh, what are we doing with these? And this is Yankee Stadium of all and any marine dealerships. I mean, this is. This is the cathedral right here, man. It's, you know, 30 something thousand square feet of awesome space here. Indoor air conditioned showroom. So welcome it, to Yankee Stadium. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I mean, that, that's the coolest thing about Marine Max is it's like you go on a field trip. I like going to all these different stores and stuff. You go down to Venice, you see their awesome marina with all their high end drives. You go down to Fort Myers and see the 26 acres. Yeah. All of that stuff. And, and the yachts all lined up in the back. Every store is different. You go down to Sarasota there, you got the restaurant out front and everything too. Yeah. And it's, it's every store is different. And, and that's what I think is cool. Yeah. You go to NYSC and you've got the big service yard and the haul out well and stuff like that. And Very all the, impressive. All the famous yachts being hauled and stuff like that. But it's it, there. We all fly the same flag. We wear the same colors, but every store is a little bit different. So with that being said, I want to welcome everybody to Boating Tips Live as always. Facebook right here at Marine Max Leisure. Instagram and YouTube at Marine Max Online. Hear me blab on with some uh, walkthroughs and watch Keith give some give some other boating tips. You might recognize these channel markers back here from one of Keith's intro to boating classes or women on water. So we'll get to that in a second. Or two or three of them. <laughs> and of course, Twitter at Marine Max. Today, what we're going to be covering, we're going to be covering new technology. A little bit different than what you might think. Everybody thinks new technology, new technology. You think that you think the FLIR, you think the you think the cool stuff, you think the night vision and everything, but I mean there's technology all around us, you know, and even the stuff that we take for granted every single day. So a lot of good stuff. You guys know anything, drop them in the comments, please. Anything we're missing, anything that you think might be next, go ahead, drop your bold your bold predictions down below. And and we'll see if you're right. So join in, ask us some questions, man. Make it easier for us and uh, you know easier for you guys too probably to watch so two things one gonna get to the questions from last week yep. of course we're gonna get to those first got one for me got one for Keith first one I went and got an answer down below from from Chris one of the service advisors here at Marine Max Clearwater great guy Chris Ellington he's uh he's you're gonna want to go to one of them anyways they're all good Steve Barada I have a 2020 SDX 290, that's a C-Ray with an inverter and Kenyan grill option. It comes standard with two batteries. I would like a little longer grill time. Is it possible to add a third battery? Right off the bat, if I ever get a question that technical, I drive boots. I'm a bus driver, sales guy. Probably going to have to check on service with that, and that's exactly what we did. Yep. So the answer to that, Steve, is no. Adding a third battery or fourth battery is going to be redundant. It's not going to do anything. However, this is what I got. From the factory, from both Sea Ray and Whaler, they say that on high, you're going to be get about 30 to 45 minutes of grill time. And on medium, you might be able to extend that to an hour or a right. little bit longer. If you're not seeing that, though, if you're not seeing 45 minutes, 30 minutes on high, it could be an issue with your inverter or your inverter panel. And Keith brought up a good point earlier when we were talking about adding a battery or two. You do run the risk of it possibly messing with your warranties. Huh, if you yeah, I mean, C-Ray's got this, you know, that's their business. They've got this stuff dialed in. You got a 2020, a brand new boat, um, you know, and it's not going to gain you anything. So, no, pass on doing that. Stick with what you got and, uh, you know, go from there with that. Um, Lucy also uh, last week had a question as far as uh, – when women on water classes are going to start back up in clear water as of right now, we're still kind of in a holding pattern kind of way to see, see things uh, kind of play out here and what goes on. I'm just as anxious as you are. We all are we want to, you know, obviously get back to the normal. Um, but as soon as we know, we get the green light, you're going to be, uh, it'll be about blasted out on social media um, and just keep checking in with your sales guys. 
with your getaways coordinators, look at the Marine Max calendars. Um, everything's on there at marinemax.com. Look in get, uh, getaways, events, and stuff like that. And uh, we'll uh, get back to it ASAP. Hey, I, I love those women on water classes. I do. So I've sat in on a couple of them. You know, we talk about these little nuggets. If you can pick up one little nugget at each one of those classes. I, I picked one up in, in a story, Keith, I'm going to let you tell. When we did that women on water class in Pasadena Yon Country Club, and you told a story about we're talking about shooting flares and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that story of when you were going out one day, you want to explain why you shoot two flares instead of one? Yeah, sure. Um, we were personal experience, right? Running offshore early one morning and it's, it's a little lumpy and you know, it's cold. So we're all kind of, you know, you're hunkered down and staying behind the windshield. And it was like five 30 in the morning running out. It's dark. And just off in the distance, you see a flash or it was actually a flare going up, but you know, you think maybe it's a shooting star as you're just getting, you know, your brain playing tricks with you. But by then our focus is over towards where we saw that. And then you see the second one go up and it's like, uh oh, okay, something is going on here. And legally your responsibility as a, as a boater, you know, to go render assistance. So, you know, we turned off, we went over and checked it out. And sure enough, there's a commercial grouper boat that had been sitting out there and it's cold. And there's these two guys on the boat, man, and they're just sweating bullets and they got five gallon buckets. They lost their battery power, their bilge pumps quit working. They had a leak in the boat and they've been actually out there just, just bailing all night long so we couldn't do anything for them personally but we were able to get on the vhf radio got hold of the coast guard coast guard flew a chopper out dropped down a pump and then they were able to you know keep the boat afloat and, and get those guys doing but it was the second shot that actually got us to divert off so if you're out there you shoot that first one off go ahead load it up again and put the second one in the air check your dates on your flares guys they're only good for three years if you haven't bought flares in the last three years, I guarantee you they're expired. Better yet, if they're expired, come in, see Nick, see any of our guys here at Clearwater or St. Pete. You're going to get a brand new flare kit with your brand new boat. So you don't have to buy flares. You get the boat, we'll give you the flares. So that's the way to do it. That's that's when you know it's time to buy a boat. My flares are expired. Got to go to Remax. Yeah, three years, it's probably time anyway, especially right. with the 2021s rolling out here in the next couple of weeks. Model year changes better than Christmas. I'm excited. It's the, it's the time of the year. So so come on in and see us, and, and we'll make it happen. Moving on to technology, I'm excited. I'm a nut when it comes to all this new technology. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, what's next? What's here? I go on Facebook and getting ready for Voting Tips Live, and I come across an article. Let's see, where are we? on technology on boat boating magazine about what here it is i'm sorry power and motor yacht magazine i see you know we talk about joystick i mean when you think technology the first thing we think of we think of any sort of joystick technology of course that's name brand yamaha's got a great joystick system mercury has a phenomenal joystick system but as you know it's a, it's a twin engine system or multiple engine system, two, three, four Twins, engines trip, stuff like quads, that. Right. And everybody says, man, I, 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 I want a joystick, but I, I, I don't need a boat that's over 27 feet, 29 feet. So I come across an article of a power motor yacht magazine, single outboard joysticks have arrived. Okay. So I'm thinking, what the heck is that? You know, you've got, you know, just logically thinking, okay, joystick, you're walking side to side, you're walking diagonally. How's it going to do that with a single engine without any thrusters and stuff? Well, that's not exactly what it means. However, you now have, you now have the ability to, you've got your throttle and you're steering on one hand. So just like that. So instead of in and out of gear, stuff like that, spinning the wheel, you're doing it all with one hand, which I think is pretty cool. I think that I wasn't expecting that. I didn't even know anybody talking about that. And I just got kind of dropped in with the general public on a new Yamaha Helmmaster system. It's called the Helmmaster EX. So seven hours ago, it came out fresh out of the oven, fresh out of the press. And, and I think, I think it's pretty cool. It makes sense. I mean, think about it with you. If you got a single IO or outboard, you know, you're shifting and turning and looking back and doing all that. If you've got that, the joystick, I mean, it's, it's I'm sure it's bound to have happened. So you can just stand there, 
turn around and just, uh, you know, back your boat right into the slip or drive it in forward. Makes sense. So that's, that's news to me. And in and, and, and reading on here, it looks like you're still going to have your fish point or your spot lock or your um, whatever you want to call it. It switches between name brands, but whatever. But you're still going to be able to have that. And it's also going to integrate autopilot, which is probably my favorite thing with these joystick systems, just how user-friendly the autopilots are. You know, instead of twisting a knob or whatever, you're, you're just kind of knocking it back and forth and... I think it's yep. pretty cool. Yep. Get your heading hold and then just twist or bump it over. Hey, Debbie's going to come see you. <laughs> <laughs> so the flares are expiring. So Debbie, first of all, Banjo Deb, we miss you. She, uh, she's, she, she always took good, good care of me back when I still was, was a dock boy. I was a dock hand, still had fur on my antlers. I'm pretty, pretty <laughs> sure. And she's got a 15 sport and she, she rode in on her bike one day. We were having a little in-house boat show and, never not a boater or anything that was only two years ago we spent a lot of time together a lot of time and all of her friends call her captain deb now and she's, yep. she's pretty much the coolest person in her condo complex no i know or she's <laughs> coming to the women on water classes too so Deb, thanks for watching thanks for all your support and we'll see you in the fall so i'll, I'll take good care of your boat i'll uh put put eyes on on the molly brown every once in a while so we've got Let's see. Jason, thank you for tuning in from South Pasadena. That's more my neck of the woods. Yep. Thanks, thanks for watching. Thanks for dropping in. Uh, we got Lisa Harrison. What do you do with expired flares? That's a good question that I don't know the answer to, but I know you do. They're still going to work, so don't throw them in the garbage. I've covered this. We've got – there's a lot of boating tips, videos out there. If you go subscribe to the Marine Max channel or go onto YouTube and look Marine Max Boating Tips, and I cover this. Um, take them to your local fire department, go to your local fire station, drop them off there. Those men and women there will take them and then they can use them when they're doing their practicing and their pyrotechnic stuff. They're burning stuff up there and all that stuff. Um, but do not throw them in the garbage. Um, when, once they're lit, you know, they stay lit. So once you snap one off, even if you inadvertently do it, which you couldn't really inadvertently do it, I guess it's a pretty dramatic thing when you light it, but even if you stick it in the water, it's still going to keep on, keep on going. So, so take them to the fire department. Fact or fiction, Keith, is it a bigger fine? Do you know to have expired flares on your boat than to not have them at all? Do not know. Yeah. I, I mean, I've heard that. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I've heard that it's, you know, which fired is worse, but I mean, make sure you can still keep your expired flares on your boat. But you just need they're gonna work make sure you've got a set of current ones with yeah. you you know so i mean if you you're lighting them off and maybe try starting with the older ones or you get one going it's like you know life jackets you know look at them if they've been sitting around for a few years make sure there's no tears in them or they're not waterlogged or you know even dirty and stuff like that you know you want to keep all that stuff good and clean which kind of we talked about last week with the clean clean boat stuff <laughs> Um, hey Judith, how are you? <laughs> Howdy, great question, buddy. <laughs> you know? Yes, I know. That's funny. <laughs> that's funny. I like that. Um, uh, I'll leave that to you, Howdy. <laughs> so let's move into some of the some of the other technology that we're going to talk about here, starting with the fun stuff. Going over here to the film modes. I've got mine on my computer. You want to talk about Seakeeper? Let's talk about Seakeeper. So we we hit on it a little bit last week. Seakeeper, like like we're talking yachts, like the big hatteras and stuff like that. You know, gyro stabilization really isn't that new. However, you see them on a 28 outrages now, the 33 outrages of small boats like that. It, it's not only a thing for the big boats and especially for charter captains too, because everybody, if you can just create a great experience for your customer out there fishing, you know that somebody gets seasick and they're not going to get seasick. I think what is it? It's ninety something percent of the roll gets eliminated. Yep, and it's as cool as it is in the videos. It's it's cool. Well, and the fatigue factor, too, True. right? Yeah. I mean, think about it. You you know you're out there all day long if you're pitching and rolling and you're fishing and you're trying to do that. I mean, you're constantly working, right? So your own body's the gyro stabilizer, right? You're trying to trying to do that. Well, you got the sea keeper turned on, then you've got a flat platform. And then you're not going to be near as tired or worn out at the end of the day. It's just going to be a more pleasurable, comfortable experience to you. And 
you know, you can turn them on and off as you're, you know, you're on the boat. If you're running, you're up at speed going, it's, you can leave it on if you like. You turn it off if you want. It'll just keep spinning until you hit the little icon on there for the actual stabilization to kick in, which is when the, the hydraulic ramps basically that are secured to your boat. Yeah. Keep you from, from tipping. But uh, Sea Keeper, the gyro stabilization is 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 phenomenal and and how does it work exactly is, isn't it like so it's it's a flywheel in a gyro right kind of i would defer to sea keeper if we yeah. get sea keeper on here but i basically think of it this way it's a top when i was a little kid you know you had the i had a little box right in mm -hmm. the top of the string and you do it and the top would spin around and knock the pins over and stuff. yeah it's probably my grandparents toy right but um so you do that but a top doesn't want to doesn't want to spin or it doesn't want to top over so the thing gets going up to like 55 56 6 yeah, rpm it, it 64 moves. whatever i mean it it's moves. spinning in there it takes it about a half hour to get going maybe 40 minutes yeah. to get up to speed then once it is once it's connected to the boat as that joist as that stabilizer tries to turn that top doesn't want to move that's anchored to your boat which keeps your boat flat so you're not going to get any kind of you know list or, or lean or anything the, the best way that i describe it i have one of those i mean this is so 2019 but i had i have one of those fidget spinners on my desk which is the things that you spin i've seen them <laughs> and it, it and it is it's the same thing so you hold it in your fingers like that it doesn't want to move side to side it wants to stay straight so that's i think it's i think it's a pretty good analogy and yep. and i know that if, if i have any co-workers watching they're probably rolling their eyes right now because they kind of get sick of me with the they're probably spinner. ever at your desk with your fidget spinner yeah so it's definitely gone now or rally's hiding it <laughs> <laughs> the i mean sea keeper is one of those things it's 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 becoming more and more practical and that's being coupled with the new technology other than that how has the industry shifted in the past few years i, I mean we've talked about this too I think a big thing of that is is, is also going to be the stuff that we're not thinking of when the super high tech stuff. For instance, looking at it right now, those retractable sunshade awnings. You know, you're seeing them on on, on more and more boats in Florida. It's you, you got manual ones. You've got you've got the you've got the ones that you're going to push a button. It's just going to go out made with the umbrella material usually. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you're talking about the wear that you have like when you're. Like with the sea keeper, I just get you get beat up all day and stuff like that. And yep, get it's out the same thing with the sun. Get out of the sun, absolutely. They're stressors. They're individual things that you know make your make you more tired and and aware. So like next week, I think we're gonna be talking about alcohol and boating and stuff like that. So all those factors all tie into that, which exacerbate the the alcohol yeah. problem part part of it too. But but like the sure shades, right? So yeah, you've got electric ones. You know, you can hit the button and she's gonna come out and retract. You've got them where you can just crank them out, almost like you're going to do an outrigger. You know, you just crank the the, the handle on a thing, and it's going to come out. Um, and that's you know name brand or whatever. Sure Shade. There's probably some other ones, but then there's also now. I mean, just how ingenious you stick these carbon fiber poles, or you get yeah. the aluminum ones or whatever from Whaler, but you put them in a rod holder, and then you got the the shade that comes up over top of the bow or right back off the stern or whatever you want to have. Yeah, it's just you know it's a brilliant idea, something super simple that's very effective, and we'd be retired right now if we would have thought of that. Oh yeah, it, 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 I mean you know the difference. Like I, I know that you ran a lot of big boats and stuff. It's just like on these long trips, like like how how much different do you feel when you run a boat with an enclosed bridge or something like that, fly bridge AC? Oh, it's huge. Opposed to, you know, being out in the elements all day it's on those huge. long trips. I mean, you, you it, it's a night and day difference. It is. It's, it's huge. It's quiet. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, you know, like a jet boat, right? Yeah. You get in a jet boat or, a, or a whatnot, just the noise, the exterior volume of that and stuff like that. You know, you run one for a little while. I mean, you can get worn, be worn out, you know, and, but then you come in and you just, then you go from that to a, Let's say you run a 19 or 21 SPX after somebody's maybe gone over and run a Yamaha jet boat or something. They come and they get on these things yeah. and how quiet the Mercury engines are and how quiet the whole boat is and the, with the dead and sound deadening and all that. It's just it's it's night and day. Yeah. You know? I, but but running a boat up on a bridge, that wind or, or whatnot, if I, you go downstairs, get in the air conditioning, you're enclosed in there. It's nice and quiet. You're running comfortable. It's it's huge. Yeah. Uh, that's and that's the number one thing that it, 
running all these demos and stuff, it's always, oh, ha, ha, ha. The number one, the number one problem with these engines is knowing if they're on. It's true. You got to check them. You can absolutely walk away from the boat with the motors running. So it is, it is nice to have a conversation, not only when you're at the dock, but also when you're running, too. You can hear the music. You can have a conversation. You can get to know each other a little bit better without hearing, bah, 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 you know, so that's that. Um, Raymarine Dock Assist. No, that came up. It's uh, going to put us out of jobs here soon. I mean, it's cool. Have yeah. you seen the videos? Yes, I've, that's just it, though. <laughs> I've seen videos. I've yet to see it in action. They've had it at some of the boat shows, I think, probably at you know Miami, Lauderdale, and, and some of the things where they you know actually had it in you know in field tests or actually running it with people. But um, you know, with the sensors and the cameras through FLIR, which FLIR owns Ray Marine, so you got the FLIR cameras, and then you've got those the cameras around on the boat, which can sense where the dock is and the other boats next to you, and you know it, it just ties it all in together, and it'll literally dock the boat for you for it, the most part. It, and, and I get being kind of skeptical about it, I do, but I mean, look, look at I mean, look at what people are doing with the Teslas, and I, I had a conversation with a Tesla owner the other day. It's like, hey. You, do you trust the car doing that? And they say, well, it's, it's, it's better than you are really. So, I mean, I'm, I'm curious to see how it, how it pans out. I do. Yeah. So, and, and it's that too. And also I'm going to hit on one thing. Have you used augmented reality yet? Yes. I was, I ran a boat, I ran an Aquila to Tampa and back, which of course, when you're making that trip at night and the shipping lanes and stuff, it's, it's all hands on deck. You're, you're looking for channel markers, you're trusting your electronics, you're trusting your equipment. And also you're looking out for the freighters and stuff like that. And the number one I was thinking is, man, it, 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 it would have been nice to have augmented reality there just in those situations where you've got a ton of things going on that you can't exactly see. Have you used it at night? Just uh, when we were doing the, some of the Ray Marine training and or, or the, promotional videos and stuff like that we did you know like a year and a half ago but i've ran around here in daytime out here in the bay and stuff and it's just it's phenomenal i mean every ch you know your channel markers are going to be on there you've got options you can actually have your waypoints on there too so if you save a spot a little flag will come up like where your waypoint is but i mean long range and stuff you know you can see your channel markers you can see a freighter coming up you get the mmsi number mm -hmm. so i mean you, you know who it is and what it is and, and all that stuff but it definitely helps it just you know that through that it's off the FLIR screen so you've got to have the FLIR camera on there and then in there then you've got the augmented reality part of it and then literally everything just kind of pops up as you're and going along in the distance so it's neat it's cool i want to use it i i just i just think i mean one of the i mean we're gonna hit on boating at night here in a little bit i think that that is kind of the the, the biggest step up you know, everybody will start boating and stuff. They'll get a, they'll get a little bit more comfortable. And I think that big jump is being comfortable to operate your boat in the nighttime. And I think that is kind of one of those things that bridges that gap between being a little bit fearful and just doing it. And you're just expanding your horizons that much more on what you can do. You're talking dinner cruises and stuff like this to new places. And, and yeah, it's going to be cool. Yeah. It's I mean, you still got to be, be, you know, cautious and vigilant and, and all and that sober. stuff and everything. But, you know, it definitely, will, you know, makes it easier or less stressful, right, where you can see things. So, um, and radar has come. We've got gangbusters ahead of where what leaps and bounds, man. I mean, that now, like with the new Simrad radar, Ray Marine, you know, it doesn't really matter. Garmin, I mean, they're dialed in so much. We, you know, we're sitting out here in the dock and it slips out back. Nick and I are sitting there looking out a window, looking out over the, the yard and Allen's Creek coming in here right now. But it'll pick up. I mean, a PVC pipe, you know, somebody in a kayak or a canoe or whatever, you dial that thing in there close. I mean, you can literally see everything on your radar, which is just going to give you the blip. Then if you've got autopilot or a heading sensor, you can overlay mm -hmm. that radar right on top of your chart. And then if you've got the FLIR along with it, so now you're looking at that, but then the FLIR is actually giving you a picture of what's going on. It makes turns nighttime into daytime. And all that. So I mean, it, even for fishing and stuff, I mean, picking up birds, I know guys have done that. You really get them dialed in. Now, now it becomes a tool. We hit on this with Jim the other week from Raymarine. And, and yeah, they're pretty dialed in. And then, of course, you've got different, I mean, you've got the open array, you've got the radomes and stuff like that. 
I mean, somebody was open a ray. I mean, you can see what the heck is going on in the middle grounds right now while we're sitting there. Why do you need that? I don't know. No. But do you, do you, from your experiences, what are some of the main differences while we're on radars here? Might be good to know between an open array, which is the one that's going to whirl around, and then your closed array. What are you, what are your thoughts on that? As far as I know, I just think the open array gives you a little more power and probably a little more detail. Yeah. But compared to what they were, they were five, ten years ago, even the closed dome arrays are still phenomenal. I mean, it's just maybe just aesthetics. Somebody may not want the big open array up there spinning around and just have a nice closed dome. It's still going to give you a great crystal clear picture. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Got a question here from Kelly. How have boat materials, hull deck, upholstery, et cetera, changed for the better? Go for it. I think the number one thing that we talked about earlier, you are, I mean, you're always going to have people that want to. Teak's classy. The upkeep, obviously, but it it is, it's never going to go away. It's nice. However, some of these new faux teak materials, the spongy stuff that they're talking about, it's great. The low upkeep, you see a lot of it. I mean, there's different name brands out there. I've had good experiences with C Deck and stuff like that. And just as far as not slipping and stuff like that goes, it's easy on the feet easy on everybody getting on and off the boat and stuff like that. That's only it's, really been around for how long would you say? Five, six years. Five, or something yeah. like that. So, but it's cool. I mean, kind of depending on where you are in the country, but I know down here in Florida where it's hot, you know, the, a lot of people like the lighter colors, you know, yeah. just because you don't have the, the heat factor. Um, I mean, and really true, like if you still had a boat or a yacht with teak wood, you know, that will still, you know, get kind of, kind of hot on you. So the, the sea deck, the faux teak and all that stuff is definitely going to be a lot cooler. Um, they've got materials now in, uh, these cushions that are the cool, cool foam, cool fill or, or whatnot. Yeah. Like, so like, I know, like the Aviara. I was going to say an Aviara. I've never delivered one. I've got a little bit of experience on it, but I remember that's one of the things that I remember is, I mean, you can leave that boat outside right now and right. No, no matter what it's going to be. Even a darker even material. Even a darker colors, right, yeah. It's like the cool feel, cool touch technology they've got to them. So, I mean, there's a lot of things changing and coming down the pike that they keep, you know, obviously upgrading and making everything better. Um, what else? Digital anchoring systems. This is one of the first things I wanted to talk about. This this is something that is not necessarily new, but you're seeing it really used here in the last, I'd probably say, two years. I remember the first time I saw a 30-foot plus center console with the trolling motor. I said, hey, what's, what's this guy think he's doing? Right. You know, what's this guy doing? It's not the case, though. So all these anchoring systems, digital anchoring, that, that could be your sky hook or or even whatever Yamaha's Hellmaster does too, that's working off of the big, uh, of the outboard engines, multiple outboards to keep you in the same spot. You've got your trolling motors now doing the same thing with your spot lock technologies or, or even on your Rodan and stuff. And basically what that's doing, and it's even on these big center consoles that, you know, your 33 hour rig and stuff, the bows are gonna be way high on the water, real long shaft mm -hmm. on a trolling motor because you gotta take into account you got to put the prop in the water and also it's not flat calm offshore always. So you might be in some rollers. So you're not going to want cavitation when you're going up and down. And it's just a matter of going up to the spot. Don't worry about the anchor, push the button GPS. And basically it's going to lock you into your heading on which the wind and the waves are going to come. And it's going to keep you right there. Just at the push of a button. The only thing you're at the mercy of is your battery power at that point. Right. So, so, Think about this though too. So the sky hook, it was developed basically. So if you're pulling up to a, a dock, a uh, slip, a fuel dock, you're waiting for a bridge to open. Those engines are back there turning and turning and burning and, and got to hold you into place. Right? Yeah. So now you've got a lot of air and a lot of turbulence underneath the, the boat. So your transducers are going to blank out. So we've had guys that go out and you know, they think, okay, I'm just going to lock in with my sky hook. Yeah and fish this spot. Well, now you lose the bottom machine. Plus you've got the, the sound of the engines kicking in and out of gear. And they're working hard now. Too. Now it's perfectly fine. So you, you roll up to your spot. You might be, I don't care if you're 30 feet or 200 feet. You know how, before you get anchored up on your spot, you want to kind of test it out. Right? So you go up and you motor fish it. So mm -hmm. somebody normally stands at the helm and just kind of tries to hold you there. A couple guys drop down. 
boom, you get hooked up. It's like, okay, let's get anchored up on this yeah, spot. Let's build the Skyhawk's sky, sky hook's going to be great for that still. You roll up, hit it. Okay, drop down. Boom. All right, they're home. Let's, you know, get my anchor yeah. heading here and get anchored up on the rock pile or, or the wreck or whatever it is. Now, with these big trolling motor capabilities, it's going to be a lot quieter. Plus, say you get up over your wreck and you're holding yourself there, right? And or if you move off a little bit, then you can like a trolling motor, you know, move yourself over a little bit or adjust and and do all that. Skyhook's great for for holding you in a situation like maybe if you're sabiki and up right out of mm -hmm. the the cans out the ship channel mm -hmm. or something, you want to hold there. It's great. But then I really do like what they're doing now with these big big trolling motors on these the big center consoles. Yeah, so I, I think I think that the biggest thing is getting used to seeing a absolutely an absolute monstrosity of a trolling motor on a big beautiful center console. However, remember when power poles came out? Yeah. You know, you had to get used to looking at a power pole on the back of your boat. And then now and now everybody's got them, you know, on their on their little Montauks and stuff. I mean, we've got a ton of them on Montauks just as far as shallow water anchor right. systems go. Right. I mean, I don't think we've I, I put one. I don't think we've put one on a whaler here yet or anything. But I mean, I've seen them. But I'm sure they're also removable, right? So if you're not gonna use it, can you unlatch it, unlock it, and take it and leave it at the leave it at the house if you're not using it? Yeah. So we just did one on a 27 Dauntless, and we've also got one. On well, I've done trolling motors on like the Dauntlesses, and right? Stuff like they're that. removable. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're just on a bracket, so so you know so so if you decide yeah. to do that. You know, you don't have to worry about that being up there all the time. So you just you pull the little cotter pins out, pull the bracket out, take it off, take it inside the house. So and if we're storing it on your lift, you know, you don't want somebody to steal it. Take it off and take it home, put it inside the put it inside the house. You know, just put it on there where you use it. And, and and the crazy thing, it, it almost seems with the boating industry, like you talk about cars and stuff like that. It, it seems like it seems like technology evolves at a faster pace it's like you'll see something new come out and then i mean i i i i can only think of the time 10 years from now where we think augmented reality last time i used that you know i, I fell off my dinosaur you know what i mean it's like you know you never know what's right around the corner one thing epurbs okay i want to talk about epurbs here for a second when we when we think of uh, of of your your traditional epurbs it's like okay mounted somewhere a lot of it will be hydrostatic it's a big old thing a lot of it will be manual release i mean epurbs nowadays which epurb what does it stand for emergency positioning indicating indicator radio, radio beacon, beacon epirb yeah drawn a plan so i mean even some of your smaller epurb like devices like your spot devices and stuff like that i never leave short leave offshore without it i mean you've got your vhs and everything but and just talk, talk about the, the the peace of mind. And if you hit one of those things, they will come. Yep. They will come. So, so yeah. So, you, you've said spot. So, there's spot messenger. I think Garmin's got or Garmin's got one. Atlas tracks. That might even be Garmin's one. But there's a bunch of different ones that are – you got different types. You got a personal locator beacon, which is just like for an emergency. If you, you, lie, you activate it. The signal's going to go to the satellite. It's going to go to the Coast Guard. It's going to go to anybody that's got that, pick up that frequency. Your latitude and longitude will lock in. They'll know where you are. They'll send, the Coast Guard's going to come. But then there's also like the personal ones, like the Spot Messenger, where you're going to subscribe to a service that's going to monitor it, just like an alarm company does your house, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got like the first generation one where I had to actually log into a computer and predetermine a message like hey the weather's great wish you were here so i'm allowed to have 10 people on a buddy list so if i hit that button 10 of my buddies on that list are either going to get an email or a text and it's going to, they're going to get that message they're going to get a google earth picture of the latitude longitude of where i am so if i'm offshore fishing and i'm supposed to be back at the dock by five o'clock in the evening and the fish don't start biting until four o'clock and I've got a 80 mile run to make, I'm not gonna make it back there. I can just hit that uh, button on there that's gonna send that message to my buddies. Then I don't know, okay, everything's cool and they're good to go. There's also a help button on there so that if I were to activate that, they're gonna get that message that says, hey, look, he's probably might be broken down here, something's up, he needs help, but it's not escalated to the point where we need to call on the authorities. Then there's the SOS button. If you hit that SOS button, then it goes to the 
company that monitors it. They lock in on your spot. So if you're out here in the Gulf of Mexico, they're going to notify the Coast Guard Air Station, which is right around the corner here. They're going to be able to get a boat, plane, helicopter, fly it out to you and get to your position. If you're out in the middle of Montana and something happens and you're laying out in a butte or a dune or whatever they call it out there and you need help, you hit that SOS button. They're going to get your coordinates and they're going to call the proper authorities that are out there. So it'll work anywhere in the world. Um, now they've got the newer modern ones out that you can actually on the fly, you can text your message and, and send it to you instead of having a predetermined one out there. Um, how do you manage to set in reach? So that's another another brand there that, you know, obviously how he's you know, familiar with. And uh, he's got a lot of good captains and buddies and stuff that he fishes with. And uh, so that's that's obviously what they they go with right there. Yeah, I mean, even these new ones, like I've had experience with the spots and stuff. Jan, I don't know if she's watching, but she texts me all the time. Hey, we're doing good. You know, hey, we're 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 catching some fish here. And and then, of course, she tells me that and got the lat long going to Navionics. OK. <laughs> hey, that's my spot. You know, so. <laughs> and it's for a peace of mind. It's not even that expensive. I mean, you could look it up right now. I mean, even those little devices, it's it it, it is probably the the most worth it thing that I can imagine. You know, if it could save your life someday, or at least put you in touch with loved ones. You know, for just a monthly subscription or whatever, it's it's a no brainer. Yep, yeah. no. -brainer. Take it on the boat with you. Take it in the car with you. Take it wherever you. Yeah, wherever when you're you not go. on a boat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you ever, you know, yeah, it's, ran into a situation on land. Absolutely. Could, could save your life. Yep. Yep. If you don't have cell service or you can't get hold of somebody, that will work. Because it'll go to the satellite and that's it. Um, you want to cover windlasses here? That's got a little windlass thing on our list. Um, first of all, a windlass is your anchor retriever, right? So it's a, there's a clutch and a gear and stuff that's going to pull your anchor line up. So if, you, if you've got a bigger yacht, bigger boat, a heavier boat, you're going to want to have a, a, a windlass so you're not having to pull it in by hand. Um, this actually came up today. One of the sales guys, they had a customer that anchored their boat and everything was fine. But then all of a sudden, it, more line kept coming out and coming out and coming out and all that stuff. If you anchor your boats, with your windlass, if you look right next to the windlass, there's going to be a cleat right there, right? If you get off your boat, take the time to let out some extra line and tie that line off to that cleat. Um, that way, if the clutch lets loose, then the, you're not relying on that clutch and that windlass to hold the, the boat there. And that's why there's a lanyard on your boats too. So as that anchor comes up, if you're running along, make sure you tie that anchor up into the boat so you're not just relying on the, the gears and the clutch and that windlass to hold that anchor up in there. Take the time to hook the lanyard on. So if it does slip out, you're not going to, it's not going to come flying loose um, and all that. There's a little tool like a star that you can put down into the top of that windlass to, to dog it down, right? Mm -hmm. To make it tighter yeah. towards grabs. So that's what they had to do when they were out at the beach the other day is grab that and tighten it back down. You can also use it to loosen it up, though. If like we're out in freeze full, if we're out yeah, and, and say we're, we're that. going along, yeah. or you totally lose battery power. Yeah, something happens and the boat's just shut down, and you're drifting, and you're heading towards a jetty or something. The worst case scenario, you get up there, you get that tool, make sure you know where it is. You break that loose, down goes the anchor. Mm -hmm. Then you can tighten it back up and then tie it off onto the cleat. Um, one other thing too, with Howdy Manis on here reminds me, we were on a boat one day and we were anchored up and uh, we were actually scalloping and I get in the water, I'm swimming along and this and that. And all of a sudden Howdy's like, Hey, Keith. So something shorted out and it pulled the anchor back up into <laughs> the boat. So had he not been on the boat, which if you're diving or swimming, you should always have somebody in the vessel. But had we both been out swimming around and all of a sudden the anchor decides to retrieve itself, that boat's going to be drifting. We're going to be swimming after the boat trying to catch up to it. So once you get your boat anchored, if you have a windlass, make sure you go back and kill the power to the windlass so that if something were to happen, it were to trip, short out, anything, it can't work on its own. 
which in this case, it absolutely did. That's a personal lesson I learned, learned there. And uh, luckily everything was, was good, but uh, make sure you kill the power to your, your windlass once you get the boat hooked up. There you go. I didn't know that. I just dawned on me when I saw it on there. I just yeah. totally forgot about it. You know, well, I, I guess, I, I guess that's better than, you know, you diving in the water and you look at your anchor line and it's going down. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I mean, windlasses are nothing new to you. I mean, they, they've also came a long way too. I mean, from the days of, I mean, you still see them around with the big drum systems on the front of boats and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yep. A lot of those commercial guys will use or whatever, but even with the remotes and stuff, I mean, you can, I mean, on a lot, on a lot of these whalers, you can control the windlass from the helm and from the windlass itself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of those things that have came a long way. And plus, I mean, they're so small and compact now too. They put a lot of work in for those little, those little devices. So, Hey Alex, thanks for joining. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so, so with that being said, what are we covering next week? June 22nd, heat of summertime, it's getting hot, alcohol and boating. Yep, sober skipper. So, sober skipper. So like we talked about before with uh, Gasparilla and stuff, it'll it, – beers are a little different on a boat. I mean, yep. everybody enjoy themselves, be safe. But if you're driving, it's one of those things that, you know, it might sneak up on you quick and put you in a situation that yep. you might not want to be in. Yep. If you're out and about on a boat, just designate a sober skipper. It's very simple. Uh, it may save your life or somebody else's. So just if you're the boat guy driving a boat or the girl, just do it sober. Let everybody else partake and do what they want. And then it's, you know, then everybody's going to have a good time. So see you guys next week. You know, you know where to find us, Facebook, right here at Marine Max Leisure. And you can also watch these videos after the fact. So feel free to drop a comment even after we get off. If, if you watch this and you have a question that you want us to answer, we could either answer it ourselves or put you in touch with somebody that knows exactly what they're talking about on a specific situation. Go ahead, drop us a line, no pun intended. And we'll get that answer for you next week. So everybody have a great week. See you out in the water this weekend. Hopefully I'll be out there. I know in one way or the other, Keith will be too. So but all week we're busy. We are. So get them while they're hot. So. <laughs> Thanks for Googling it, Debbie. I'll, uh, we'll, 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 uh, I don't know if they'll, they'll have one for your 17 Montauk, but hey, it's a little overkill. Yeah. This guy's the limit, right? Power pole, maybe. Just saying. So, all right, guys. All right, guys. Yep. It's, it's uh it's it's been fun i'll tell you what monday I had the monday blues woke up this morning and i said hey we're gonna go building tips live you getting to come up to clearwater so get to get to roll with the big dogs so. here so thanks all for right everybody there. thank you for joining us we'll see you next week see you out on the water bye